Hey guys, welcome to this video. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about all the different beauty products that I tried during the month of September. If you guys have watched this video right here, you'll be very familiar with this hand cream. This is the Face Shop's Macadamia Daily Perfumed Hand Cream. And as you can see, I've already used up half of this tube. And what I love about this is how affordable it was. It was less than four US dollars. Um, this cost 3,900 won in Korea. And if you are into vanilla and coconut scents like me, you'll love this and I recommend this to just throw in your purse for everyday use. I picked up another tube of Etude House's Dr. Mascara Fixer. And again, I have a separate video here so you guys can see what it looks like on my lashes. What this is is basically an eyelash primer and I love this because it actually does give me volume and it does hold my curl when I wear this under my everyday mascara. If you guys haven't checked out this item yet, I really encourage you to. If you've been watching YouTube videos for a really long time, this next item will be very familiar to you. And this is Sigma's blending brush, the E25. I know that this is very comparable to the MAC blending brush. I think it's the MAC 224, but um, this one is like about half the price of it. I haven't had a decent blending brush ever. Like I've only used um, like cheaper versions and I haven't really liked the ones that I've used. So I decided to pick this up and I absolutely love this. Um, I love how soft the bristles are, but not so soft that they're flimsy because it really gets the job done in blending out eyeshadow. Whoa, I started scratching myself and now it just looks really gross. <laughs> These next three items I've purchased online from a Korean company called Abamart. And I know that they have an app and a website, but I'm not sure that they have a physical store. When I checked out their app, I saw that most of their products are super affordable. Like I'm talking makeup brushes that are under five bucks. And so I picked up three things. This is the base shadow brush 9PI in the number 039L. This brush here, it doesn't have the name of the brush, so I actually went ahead and um, wrote it on a piece of like label sticker so that I can show you guys. I really like this for applying eyeshadow all over the lid. The brushes, they stay put even after you wash them, as in like they don't start poking out in all these different directions. And the bristles are very soft, comparable to the softness of the Sigma E25 blending brush. And the best part is this brush costs 4,001, which is like around three US dollars. So I think this is a steal. And um, for the brushes available at Abamart, you can actually decide on the length of the handle. So the model number 039L, L means long or large. And compared to the Sigma, it is shorter. Um, they do have a, a medium, I think. And then I think there's one size above this, but I thought that was a little bit too long. So I went with the large. My second Abamart purchase is also an eye brush, and this is the White Base Shadow Brush 9PI in the model 055L. Again, I got the long or large size handle for this, and I was hoping that this would be a dupe for the Sigma E25. I was only curious because when I checked this brush out online, they looked very, very similar. This also cost 4,001, which is about $3. And um, when I got them and I did a side-by-side -side comparison, it appears that there are more bristles in this brush. But uh, one thing that I noticed after washing them is that while the Sigma retains its shape very, very well, I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but this brush, um, the bristles kind of are unruly and they poke out. And I don't know if that bothers a lot of you, but it kind of bothers me. And I can't say that it's as soft. The E25 Sigma is way softer, but if you're on a budget and you're looking for something similar to the E25, um, give this a try because it's so cheap. My last Abamar purchase is also a beauty tool, and honestly, I was the most excited for this item right here because of two reasons. Um, well, first of all, the thing that I purchased is an eyelash curler, and I was really excited because this costs 1,301, which is like less than a dollar. So that's pretty crazy. The second reason I was really excited for this is because, you know, since it is a Korean brand, I imagine that they know most eye shapes of like Asian faces. And the reason I bring that up is because a lot of um, 
eyelash curlers from brands like Revlon or Maybelline, like the US drugstore brand. Um, I find that the curve of the eyelash curler, they're too deep and because my eye shape is like flatter, the lash curlers don't sit nicely on top of my eyes to give me the curl that I need. Like I can't really reach the base of my lashes. And so I figured, okay, a Korean brand, they probably know what they're doing. Um, it's so cheap, it's one of their popular items, so I picked this up. But immediately, if you guys can see the difference, the one on the right here is my Shiseido curler, and this has been my Holy Grail eyelash curler um, for a really long time now. But even at first glance, you can tell that the Abba Mart one is a lot curvier than the Shiseido one. The Shiseido one's a bit flatter. So this one actually sits very nicely on top of my eye. Whereas this, um, if I want to really get to the base of my eyelash, I have to kind of press this in. And what that does is it, the sides of the curlers here, they kind of like poke me at the ends of my eyes and then they leave a dent. So if I'm wearing eyeshadow, this will ruin it and it actually kind of hurts. So if your eye shape is like mine and you have like a flatter surface area, I would not recommend this to you. So I told myself that I would not buy foundation until I finished up at least one of the current foundations that I own, but I really couldn't help myself and I had a gift card to a department store here. So I just went ahead and bought the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. What intrigued me about this foundation from what I've heard is that it gives you a not too dewy but not too matte finish. And this foundation gives you a medium coverage with a very natural finish. One of the other big selling points for this is that um, your skin's supposed to come out looking really flawless and natural on like HD cameras and um, the new 4K technology. I don't even know what that means to be honest and I'm not gonna pretend I know what that means but I imagine it means like really, really high quality cameras. You're gonna look amazing. I'm wearing this foundation today and I applied this about seven hours ago and I feel like it still looks really natural and it doesn't look like I'm wearing a lot of foundation and it also feels very light. I almost feel like I'm not wearing anything. And I apply this with a beauty blender and I think this may be one of my new favorite foundations. Also, for those of you guys that don't know, the original formulation has been discontinued and replaced by the Ultra HD, and the numbers for the colors are different. So in the original formula, I was shade 140, and what's nice is on the bottom of these bottles, it tells you uh, the conversion. So 140 equals Y305 in the Ultra HD foundation. So I have been seeing ads everywhere in Korea for the Innisfree Real Fit Lipstick and I picked this one up. This is in the shade 7, um, Latte Hanjan Pink, so it's like uh, one cup of latte pink. <laughs> I can't really translate it, I guess. It's a nice everyday pink. I just really like my, my lips but better kind of shades and this lipstick claims to instantly cover your lips with a clear color and without a heavy feeling. Um, the formula is very nice and it actually even kind of smells a little bit like candy. So one thing to note about this lipstick is that you want to make sure your lips are really well moisturized. Otherwise, this is going to just settle into the cracks on your lips and then it just kind of looks a little bit messy. I personally wouldn't highly recommend this, but if you want to try it, I think it's an affordable lipstick. And maybe if you don't have lips as dry as mine, this might be perfectly fine for you. But for me, it does require a little bit of maintenance. I can't just take it out of my bag and swipe it on. Like I have to make sure I have lip balm or chapstick and then let that dry a little bit before applying this. The last item is an Etude House eye primer and this is Proof 10. I bought this because I finally had to throw out my Urban Decay Primer Potion because I've just had it for way too long. And if you look at the Urban Decay Primer Potion tube, on the back it says the product is good for six months once open. And I know I've had it way longer than six months. So I decided to throw that out. Honestly, I don't notice a huge difference between using this or the Urban Decay Primer Potion. And this is a fraction of the price and it's so much easier for me to get this in Korea. As I'm looking at the bottom of this product here, it looks like this is also good for six months once it's open. And I feel like it's way more reasonable to try to finish this in six months than the Urban Decay Primer Potion. There was no way that I was finishing that within six months of opening it. If you are on a budget and you wanna check out an eye primer, 
um, go ahead and take a look at the Etude House Proof 10 Eye Primer. Okay guys, well that wraps up all the stuff that I tried out for the month of September. And if I had to just strongly recommend two items out of these 10, um, my top candidates would be the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation and the Etude House Dr. Mascara Fixer. This has now become one of my holy grail foundations and well this I'm just gonna buy for the rest of my life. Also, if you made it this far, please comment below if you have a video request. Your feedback is always super helpful and I am totally open to interacting with you guys. Okay, I will see you in my next video. Bye!